Welcome to the Fitness Oracle, where we have real conversations with real people just like you. I am your host, John Katsavos, and today we dive deep into an inspiring journey with our guest, Daniel Spencer, husband, father, life coach, blue collar worker. He's faced his fair share of challenges just like anyone else. But 12 years ago, he made a life changing decision. He chose sobriety. It was the first step toward reclaiming control over his health. After an interesting experience at a Super Bowl at his brother's house, he found the courage to go sober and overcoming a near-death experience at work was the turning point as fear vanished and he found the courage to share his joy, inspiring others to conquer their obstacles. Now as a life coach, he empowers people from all walks of life, helping them replace bad habits with healthy ones. His clients are gaining confidence, discovering self-worth, and transforming their bodies and lives. During our conversation, we explore the impact of unhealthy habits on your families, the steps he took towards sobriety, the journey through his work accident, his personal body transformation, and the inner workings of his coaching program. Are you ready to take your life to the next level? Join the Fitness Oracle newsletter today for exclusive perks. As a subscriber, you'll get early access to our new episodes and a one-on-one phone call with me to discuss your fitness goals. You'll also become part of our vibrant private community where we gather to discuss episodes and how you can apply the lessons to your life. But wait, there's more. As a member of our exclusive community, you'll gain access to exciting programs to continue your journey towards health and wellness. Don't miss this opportunity. Join the Fitness Oracle newsletter today and embark on your path to a happier, healthier you. Let's transform together. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, John. I appreciate it. So, how's the uh, the training going? Because I know you're doing the pro- the uh, the personal training online. How's that coming along? Yeah, it's going good. It's going good. Uh, I've got quite a few clients. They're all getting good results. They're all um, dropping some of their bad habits, right? Replacing them with with the best ones. Um, mindset training, proper nutrition working out, you know, um, I usually try and have my clients work out, uh, resistance training at least three times a week. And then the other days we just fill in with, um, you know, walks or bicycling, swimming, whatever, whatever it is they're into hiking or something like that. Just to some, something to keep the activity level up every day. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I usually kick off the show with these two questions just to get a better feel about, you and why you're doing the things that you're doing. So what first got you interested in this line of work? Uh, first, it was just for my personal health. I was, uh, at one point, I was almost 300 pounds and drinking daily. Uh, once I quit drinking, I uh, changed my diet a little bit. I lost about 60 pounds and I kind of stayed at that weight. Uh, I was like 265 for quite a few years. And then my wife and I's 15 year wedding anniversary was coming up and we were both overweight, just our habits, um, our style of eating. We were both overweight and we decided we wanted to have a big party for our 15 year wedding anniversary. And she said, if we're going to do this, I want to look good in these photos. I want to, I mean, not just because of that, but just we were not happy with the way we looked or with the way we felt. So we joined a transformation camp and uh, it was a weight loss challenge where you lose 20 pounds and uh, I believe it was six weeks and you pay the money, you beat the challenge, you get your money back. I beat three challenges in a row. I lost about 70 pounds and, uh, and it just became my new habit. That became my new addiction was, was working out and the confidence that I, that I gained with it. Right. That's, that's what really kept me going 
the feeling of accomplishment because I would get up at 3 a.m. and uh, go to the first class, which was at 4 a.m., do a hard workout, go straight to work. And I got the hardest part of my day done, which is taking care of ourselves, right? Self-care. Um, so the feeling of accomplishment, the feeling of, you know, losing the weight, getting stronger, um, it, it was uh, it was reinvigorating, you know, and brought like a new passion to to myself. I could see the changes it was doing for my family because my wife and I were eating differently. Um, so it was just beneficial all around. You said then, some... sorry, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Keep, going, keep going, keep going. Um, uh, so then <clears throat> I kept continuing it, continuing. People were asking me, um, dude, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Um, they were, you know, are you doing keto, intermittent fasting? What what diet are you on? And um, it was no, it was nothing really too crazy. It was just lean meats, real complex carbs, cutting out all the sugars and fats. Um, and then I didn't really know how to show people how to do it, right? I didn't have like a training program. So I found a coach that taught a, uh, he has a course that shows you how to um, brand yourself online. Um, so I, I had already had my Instagram page reps and double time. I had already had that started. So I just used that as my platform. Um, but he showed me what apps to use uh, for food tracking, what apps to use for the workouts. And it just started building from there. Very cool. Very cool. Have there ever been any moments where you just said that you've wanted just I'm done with this. I'm just going to focus on my job and not worry about trying to find clients, trying to make sure that they're getting the results, trying to set the, set up this program or that program. Because coming from a personal trainer, I know how much work that is. <laughs> yeah, there has, you know, it hits, it hits every, I don't know, every three or four months, you know, it just becomes a lot of work. You know, I work, um, I'm a power lineman by trade and we work 11 hours six days a week most of the time you know the option is there and i work quite a bit having to record content um you know put it together post it um come home try to disconnect from that well so i can still have time with my family um that's where the biggest problem is right trying to disconnect from my five my five to nine because i have the nine to five and then after that is the five to nine you know coaching is an all-day thing um it it's it starts to become overwhelming and then i'm like man like i just yeah i'm done i want to stop and then i get a message from somebody you know i get a message from a follower like hey man you know your story's really helping me out you know you're you're mo you're very motivational and it just relights this fire in me it's like that's why you have to keep going you know because of what you're doing is helping somebody else yeah. and if they're struggling with what I was, I used to struggle with because I, I mean, I, I'm 12 years sober, right? Um, I used to get blackout drunk nightly. Uh, I was over 300 pounds. I was almost 300 pounds. Um, constant heartburn, waking up in the middle of the night, not breathing. And if I can help somebody get through that, you know, then, then that's why I can't stop. I hear you. I hear you on that. Um, we're going to get into uh, your, I have it as one of the biggest victories a man can have is to be sober for whether it's three months, three years, 30 years. It's a huge Absolutely. victory. We'll get into that in a little bit, but you said something in the beginning that I want to touch up on. You said something and taking care of yourself is the hardest part of the day. Why is that? I don't know. I mean, as before I started getting into personal self-development, right, um, I would just get up, set my alarm for 20 minutes before I had to leave the house, right? I just wanted to rest, get up, get my stuff together, go to work, work as much overtime as I can, and then... I used to always think as long as my family has, you know, a nice house and there's plenty of money in the bank, then they'll be happy, right? Disregarding my personal health. Um, and a lot of times we say, yeah, I want to start, you know, I might not like the way I look, the way I feel. 
but I'll start on Monday. Right. Mm -hmm. Or if you, if you already started going to the gym and then you say, well, I'll just go after work. I'll, I'll do it later. You know, what well, later comes and you might have something break at the house or you might get a flat tire at, on the way home from work. And now, you know, that opportunity is missed, you know, so it has to be done. I say, I think it has to be done first thing in the morning. It's, um, I, yeah, it's, I think it's, I answered the question. Yeah, you did. You did. But it, it, it's, it's a little challenging. Like I'm lucky. I consider myself yeah. lucky because my part-time job is working at LA fitness. So in the evenings I'm already there. So I have yeah. just spent another hour, hour and a half in the gym, pumping the weight when the gym is somewhat empty, but uh, I get what you're saying, but the hardest thing that I have found, and I, and I know a lot of my clients have found this too, is uh, joining that 5 a.m. club, waking up, and just being up and at it at 5 a.m. Yeah. What steps do you have? This is skipping a little bit forward to where I want to go with this, but what steps do you have to help somebody to um, join the 5 a.m. club? It's just buckling down, right? And saying, you know what? If I take care of myself first, then taking care of everything else is going to be easier. That's the way I feel, right? It, working out first thing in the morning. I mean, working out naturally, it gives you, it releases natural endorphins, right? And dopamine, that's going to put you in a better mood. It's going to make you feel better. Um, it's going to give you natural energy first thing in the morning. So, I, I mean, for me, it's like, um, it's like the new drug for me, right? That's my new addiction is getting up and I journal and I read and then I work out. So I already took care of mind, body, soul, first thing in the morning. <clears throat> and it's a discipline, right? It's it's to instill discipline. You know, um, getting up, setting your alarm early is one of the most hardest things that most people do. Well, try to do, you know. Sleeping is very comfortable. Laying in bed, you can wake up, lay in bed, turn the TV on, scroll your phone, and you could waste an hour and a half doing that. You know, well, if you got up an hour earlier than normal and took care of your mindset, maybe some proper nutrition and then a workout, you could do that in two hours and you're still saving, I don't know, half an hour. And, um, and you got the hardest part of your day done, you know, and it's going to put you in a better mood all day. That's what I think. That's how I feel about it. That's cool. Know? How does that to create that discipline? How does that translate to uh, balancing out family life? That's that's the only time that I have for it, right? That's why I get up so early. I get up at two forty-five. Uh, I have to be at work at six thirty. So, I mean, if, if I get home, if I work late, that puts me back at my house at about six forty-five, seven p.m. Right. So then if I say, OK, well, I'm going to go to the gym right after work and I usually spend about an hour, hour and 15 minutes at the gym that puts me at home at 830, 845. I still have to sometimes I might have to meal prep um, or just have like another meal at the end of the night, shower, get my stuff ready for the next day. Now I'm in bed at 930 and I've spent zero time with my family. You know. So sacrificing a little bit of my rest and my sleep so I can take care of myself in the morning and then have the my evening with my family, then I'll sacrifice that every single day. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, at the beginning of the show, um, you talked about, you know, you're, you're sober 12, 15 years now. Just over 12 years. Just over yeah. 12 years. Congratulations. That's a huge milestone. Congrats. Yeah. When was that moment where you said that enough was enough? This has got to stop. Super Bowl 45, February 6th, 2000 and, um, 2011. Um, my wife had always been telling me, you know, for years, Daniel, I think you're drinking too much. I think you have a problem. Um, 
I would drink beers. I would I would leave my yard from work, stop straight to the liquor store, buy a half pint of rum, a couple tall boys, and I'd drink those on my commute home. I'd throw the cans and empties in the back of my pickup truck. And after a couple of weeks, I'd look, my wife would look back then. She goes, what is all this? You know, I'm like, oh, um, you know, I had no excuse. Um, so it was a huge problem. I'd wake up in the middle of the night on the living room floor, right, with a half empty beer can. Um, and Super Bowl 45, I uh, went to a Super Bowl party. And uh, it was at my brother's house. I took my kids with me because my niece and nephew were the same age. And my wife stayed at home that night, <clears throat> that day. And uh, I was drinking all day. I was drinking all day. Super Bowl was over. It was probably 9.30. And um, I had a thought in my head, like, hey, you should call Lisa. My wife's name is Lisa. I said, you should call Lisa and have her come pick you up. All right, come pick you and the kids up. Um, I didn't have work that Monday. So, I mean, I played it all in my head. You can have her pick you up. You just drive back over to your brother's house, pick the car up on Monday, no big deal. But, um, you know, that, that overconfidence took over, right? And I was just like, oh, you're, you're not that bad. So I strapped the kids in the car. I drove home. And uh, when I got home, I made some more drinks and um, I was sitting outside and I was having the drink and I just had this self actualization man. this realization just hit me like, what if you would have gotten a car crash? Um, what if your kids would have got hurt? How would you be able to live with yourself? Um, and I didn't know how to go in and tell my wife. I didn't know how to go in and, and open up to her. Cause I've always been really reserved with my emotions, with my feelings. Um, so I called some family members. I tried calling my dad and he didn't answer the phone. This was pretty late at night. I called my brother and he was probably already passed out cause he had been drinking with me all day. And then I called my uncle and he answered the phone and I just opened up, you know, I just, bawling, telling him, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm out of control. I need help. And he advised me to um, seek counseling with my uh, insurance, my health insurance, um, which was Kaiser. So the next day I called Kaiser. And like I said, I had that Monday off. I called them and I went down to their um, substance abuse facility and I checked myself in. They wanted to keep me there for an uh, inpatient 30-day um, and at the time I was a, I was an apprentice, um, but I couldn't miss, I couldn't miss 30 days of work. So they said, well, we have an outpatient program where we have meetings every two or three days a week in the evenings of like 6.30 to 8 PM. And um, I said, that's perfect. That'll work perfect for my schedule. So I did that for about three or four months. I went twice a week and, um, Having that first one-on-one -on -one with my counselor was like really, it was, it seemed really simple and really hard at the same time, because when he asked me, you know, what my habits were and how much am I drinking and how do I feel about it? And, and then he says, well, it's very simple. All you have to do is just say no. You know, that old, that old adage from the eighties, right? Just say no. And he goes, he says, uh, I go, that's it. Like, that's all I have to do. He goes, yeah. He goes, every time you have the thought, you just tell yourself, no, it's not an option. You can't, and don't try and rationalize. Um, well, I'll just have three or four drinks. Um, he goes, it's zero tolerance with yourself. He goes, you have no control. Every time somebody asks you, you have to say no. Um, but it was that night. Yeah, it was, it was that night when, when I finally realized, like, you're going to ruin your family's life. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's uh, powerful. That's powerful. It's almost like um, God came in and said, hey, what's going on? What's going on, brother? You're going down a path that's not going to end too good for yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, it, and it doesn't seem that bad, right? Because you hear about stories, you know, being in that substance abuse program. There was a whole lot of rock bottoms that were way worse than mine, you know, 
um, I hadn't lost anything. And luckily, I hadn't lost anything. Um, but for me, that was that was my rock bottom with alcohol. That's good. Well, at, at least you at least you had not too bad of a rock bottom, which is yeah. a good thing. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, other than the counselors, were there any other steps that you took to get out of it? Um, yeah, it's it's finding another habit to replace that one. You know, um, it's. I think a lot of people associate with alcoholism with something to keep you busy, something to try and have fun. You know, something that's going to try and open your spirits up. That's why they call them spirits, right? Because, um, they make you feel, they make you feel good. Well, you try and find something else that's going to make you feel good. For me, it was it was hiking. I started hiking quite a bit, um, going up into the mountains and just being in solitude, being in nature. Right? It's it was it was a different experience. You know, it was the same the, the same feeling of like euphoria, but with something natural. You know, something healthy. Um, cool. That, that's yeah. So um, you also had a work accident that actually was very um, uh, transformational. Uh, yeah. you know, let's talk about that a little bit and because this is all lining up to exactly how and why you're doing what you're doing. So what was the work accident that you had? Yeah, that was uh, just over two years ago, um, February 27, 2021. Uh, we were working in an underground vault in... Um, a high voltage link box. They call it a switch, but it's actually a link box that we hook up a switch to. Um, it was a it's a four way switch that that has blades um, that you cannot open under load. So we have these a switch, like I said, that's on top of the manhole with two leads that come down. Uh, well, me and my partner had a, a meeting with the whole crew in the morning uh, that night talked about the steps of the job, what we were going to do. When we got down there, the plan was a little different. Um, so we kind of had another conversation amongst ourselves, like, hey, this is the way I'm going to work it. You know, um, there's four positions and he was going to be up here and I'm supposed to be up here at the same level. Um, but to have two ladders down there, it wasn't going to work out right. So um, I told him, I'll just stand on the floor and work the opposite corner. Um but we're not trained that way. That's not the way the procedure is written. And uh, so essentially, um, we were on opposite phases, right? There's the power lines have three phases, A, B, C, A, B, C. And when they go together, the electricity will flow. But if you try and if you cross one of those and you try and close that in, it just creates an explosion. Um, so communication broke down. And uh, cross phase in there. I told him to close the switch. Cross phased, it blew up right in my face. It was a 4,800 volt cross phase. Um, it lasted two full seconds because the circuit breaker we were working on failed instantly. It failed to open up. Um, and uh, it got hot enough to melt the porcelain of the, the link box. It evaporated the copper bus that was in there. Um, and it put me in the hospital for 10 days. I had two skin graft surgeries. I had third degree burns all over my ears, all across my face and a little bit on my neck. Um, I got burned essentially everywhere across my face except for where my safety glasses were. Hmm. Um, two skin graft surgeries. I was off of work for five months. Um, and during those five months, man, it was a whole lot of self-doubt, you know, I was, I had this regret heavy on my back, heavy in my heart because my partner got burned. He was off of work for a while. Um, that was rough. And that's kind of what led me into trying to start coaching um, because I was scared to go back to work. You know, this wasn't the first time. Um, in, in 2011, I was electrocuted as an apprentice. And the way I, the way I handled that situation was just, drinking you know that's when i was drinking heavily um but this time it was different you know i had already been 
training for about three years. Um, so I would use the gym as my therapy. I'd wake up in the middle of the night with a nightmare. You know, I'd, I'd be sleeping and I'd see that white flash and it'd wake me up and I couldn't sleep again. So I'd go into my garage and, and work out. Um, I'd work out and I'd get towards the end of a set and I I would tell myself, keep pushing, man. You know, keep doing it because this doesn't hurt. This doesn't burn as much as your face did. This doesn't hurt as much as right after surgery when your head was bandaged up. Um, you know, this doesn't hurt as much as the guilt you have in your heart. Um, so the gym was actually part of my therapy. Uh, but still, I still had this fear, a whole lot of doubt. Um, so I, I found a therapist and, and helped me talk about it. You know, um, when I got back to work, the uh, safety section had finalized the investigation and, and they said, hey, you know, would you want to come present with us at the yard you were at? And I saw this as an opportunity um, not only to heal myself by getting it off my chest, telling my story, um, but to bring awareness to the situation, to the bring, bring awareness of the importance of our safety equipment to everybody else, you know, my peers, which is hard, right? Admitting your guilt, admitting your faults, because um, I took full responsibility for it um, in, my, in my heart, in my head. Getting up in front of hundreds of people, you know, because I did probably about, we did probably about 30, 35 safety meetings. Um, and after they would show the slides, because I would I gave them photos of my accident, they would go over what happened, what we did wrong. They'd show the photos, and I knew my time was coming. Right? They're gonna say, "Well, we have Daniel Spencer here to actually speak about it." And my heart's beating out my chest, you know. And I take a deep breath, and and I get up there and just start. You know what, like. We messed up, you know. Um, personal accountability is is very much lacking in in society, and you know, once you can admit what you're doing wrong and admit openly in, in a public spot like that, especially getting over that fear of doing that is it's freeing, you know. It's it just like there's being vulnerable. It's powerful. You know? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Uh, there's so much to unwrap, unravel there. So much. Um, you almost died twice yeah. from drinking and from being electrocuted. Uh, How do you bounce back from there? You said that you used the gym. You said you would wake up in, in the, in the middle of the night, go to your garage, start working out. Was the gym like that? that outlet for you to just unleash like all this negative crap that's been going on. hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know, um, you could be full of anxiety, pain, regret, fear, whatever, self doubt. And, and, you know, you go in there and you, that's the best outlet, you know, you, you push your body and, you get into this flow state and, you know, things just start to become clear. You know, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? Um, you get into this meditative flow state and, and you just find mental clarity, you know, um, you get out of there and the self doubt is gone because, you know, you, you just gassed yourself out and, and you're like, wow, that was hard. That was hard, but I did it. You know, I did that. My my shirt is drenched in sweat. My body is aching. But you did it, and and then the confidence is built. You know, um, it's it's way better than you know. People would ask me, "Dude, like, you're not going to go back to drinking, are you?" You know, I'm like, that's 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 not an option for me. You know, that didn't even come into my head at all. Um, that was for me, it was like, it was like a godsend, you know, having that gym here in my house. Cause this was during COVID, you know, gyms were shut down and stuff. Um, 
but it's huge for therapy. I think, you know, physical for, for, for the physical and the mental combined. Um, but the mental is also another key element, right? Cause you know, like I said before, I didn't, when I was burned as an apprentice, um, I didn't talk about it, you know, and our, our, our employer offers programs for, for assistance like that. And this time I called, you know, um, my accident was at the end of, um, April. Um, but it took me four full months to finally call and say, Hey, you know what? I need, I need help. I want to see a therapist. Um, and I was going every week, you know, we were unraveling all kinds of stuff, you know, um, first started with my work accident and and how I felt about that and then we got back into you know other things that I, I was holding on to you know other pains that I, I was having you know like my parents got divorced and and why do I drink so much or why did I drink so much and why can't I open up emotionally and speak to my wife and and it was great you know it was great it just um I'd come home and tell my wife how the session went and what, you know, what we're doing. And, and I would just open up with, with her, you know, every emotion, every feeling. Um, and it was overwhelming for her at times because she, she wasn't used to it at all, you know. Um, but then telling my story every day on Instagram and sharing my vulnerabilities, my, you know, my past, speaking in front of the safety meetings, um, I, I, I've lost all fear, you know, I'm not scared to speak, to speak my mind and speak my truth anymore. You know, before I was so reserved and, and now it's all gone. It's interesting. Um, that's a big thing that I want to talk to you about right now. Um, opening up for men. It's a tough thing. Cause I'm like you, I'm like you very reserved very to myself. I don't share my feelings. I don't talk about my feelings. Uh, my family knows that about me and they can see when I'm, when I'm hurting, but they don't bother me about it. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't up until I actually started doing John's daily bites on Facebook. And my sister reached out to me and she's like, I never knew you want, you were about to commit suicide that time. Wow. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I was, I was ready to jump off that bridge. So why do you think it's so hard for men to open up to their, to the, to the people that they care about and people that care about them to help them out of <clears throat> hardship? Because you and I both know you can't get, you can't do this alone. You need yeah. that wolf pack behind yeah. you. So why is it so hard for us men to just go to your mom, go to your dad, go to your wife, go to your sister, your brother, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle, your grandparents, and say, this is what's bothering me right now. Why is that so hard for us? I think we don't want to seem weak. You know, that's our role naturally. In, in human nature is to be the leader, be the leader of our family and, and be that strong pillar of support. And I think that we don't want to seem weak. And if we, if people see our, our, our fears, whatever's hurting us on the inside, they might say, that guy ain't got it together. You know, he's weak. I can't depend on him. Um, but I think there's more strength and admitting that, you know, there's way more strength in admitting, yeah, man, you know what? I might need some help. I I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you know, my my oldest my oldest kid, my daughter, she's she's 18, and uh, she just graduated high school. And me and my wife would have these conversations over the last couple of years, like, you know, we don't know sometimes. When she asks, well, what should I do? And we would always try and, oh, maybe we should try this or maybe we should try that. Instead of just saying, you know what? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Like, I'm scared for you too. I'm uncertain about the future also. It, you know, um, 
there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know. I need help. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, I know for sure I, I wouldn't able I wouldn't have been able to stop drinking if I didn't finally call somebody and say, Hey, I need help. I don't know what to do. You know, I probably I wouldn't have been able to lose over 130 pounds if I didn't say I don't know what to eat. I don't know how to work out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at the top leaders and the most famous people in this world, Dale Carnegie is one of them. Uh, who, Dale Carnegie, there's another one. Um, his, his name is eluding me right now, but he wrote, um, he, he shadowed some of the most powerful men in the twenties and in the 10, in the early 1910s and the, and the 20, 1920s. And he wrote some of the most amazing self-help books out there. John Allen, James yeah. Allen. No, it wasn't oh. James Allen. It was uh, one of Dale Carnegie's uh, people. I can't remember his name. It's saluting me right now, but they mask, they followed these men, these leaders, and they're both saying the same thing. You can't do this alone. In order for you to be a success, in order for you to be seen as a leader, you need to understand what it means to follow. Yeah, It's black and white right there. And we have this backwards line of thinking that we need to be that lone wolf the leader of the pack is that lone wolf and it drives me nuts when i see it because i'm i'm right in line with you brother you can't do this alone you need people behind you you need people to support you you need that 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 outlet so you can you can say yo i don't know what's going on right yeah How, when you opened up to your wife, what kind of response did your wife have? And was she supportive? Was she, oh, what's going on with Daniel? What was that like? Yeah, it was, it was totally weird. You know, um, it was, it was, I think it was a, a bit of mixed emotions, right? She was happy because I was finally able to try and resolve issues, right? That was one of our biggest things when we'd have um, a, a, like a disagreement over something. Um, you know, she would always express to me how she felt, um, what she thinks should be the solution. And I would just not say anything. You know, I was, she goes, Are, don't you have anything to say? And I would always just say, I don't know. Um, but now, I mean, I always had these thoughts of maybe this would work or that would work, but I didn't want to cause more problems. I was just like, okay, we'll just listen to her and do what she wants. Um, but then once I started actually just telling myself, just tell her exactly what you're thinking, you know, um, just say it. And if it creates a bigger problem, then it might, but at least she'll know you're responding to her. Um, and she appreciated it. You know, she really did. Um, being more affectionate with her, um, it was huge. Showing her more, more act. She's a, I just recently read, uh, before love languages, right? And hers is, um, quality of time. I think it's, I think that's what it is. Quality time, quality time, right? And just taking those moments to just spend that moment, you know, um, even if it's in an argument about something, you know, it's having I mean, that conversation. Uh, she appreciated it. She appreciated it a whole lot. And our relationship got immensely better. You know, we were happier. Um, and then being at, like, being off of work for five months from the accident, um, it was, that. that's what I try to find the silver lining, right? It brought my family so much closer. Uh, it was dad's a part of everyday life, not just dad's only home from seven to nine and then he goes to sleep. 
you know, dad's there with us in the morning. He's making breakfast. He's there when we get home from school. He's picking us up. It was nice. And then that's kind of why I wanted to get into coaching. I was like, how, how can I make money? How can I make money without having to go back to do this line of work, man? You know, um, cause I didn't honestly didn't want to go back. Um, the first day that I was back at work, they said, Oh, you're going to go meet this crew at this job site. And I remember driving the truck and I'm white knuckling it. And I was just like cold sweats. And, uh, I said, just drive this truck back home. You know, just, just go home. Um, I, I was looking for a way out from from the line of work, you know. But once I got back into it and settled back in, and you know, like I said, telling that story, telling telling my story in front of the safety section, it's just kind of like a little bit, like, you know, you're not alone here, man. You know, everybody here has your back. Um, but learned a lot with, with therapy, you know. Um, I learned a lot, a lot about myself, a lot about what I had to let go of and what I really had to gain control of. Mm -hmm. you know? Which has led you to create your own coaching program. Yeah. What is this coaching program and how is it different than all the others? Because there's millions, millions of different coaching programs. I'm in the industry myself. I know what it's like. It's not only it's a it's a hard, hard gig to to do stuff in. So how's what is it and how is it different? It's a it's a mindset program, right? I call it mindset training. Um, because it's, it's based around building confidence, self-confidence, self-worth, making yourself a better, a better individual, a better husband, better father, um, wife, sister, whatever, you know, I have male, female clients. It's about becoming the best version of yourself, um, by instilling more discipline in your habits, by getting rid of negative habits, whether that be, you know, porn addiction, alcoholism, or, um, you know, self-destructive behaviors with food or, or, you know, video games, taking those and instilling discipline with early morning workouts, um, inputting positive media into our brains, right? Either that's reading or listening to podcasts that are going to motivate us and get us thinking more better about ourselves or how to upgrade our lives. And um, discipline with what with the foods we eat, um, having self control over our portions. Um, it's I think it's better because it's, there's no fad diets. I, you know, I get clients and they say, "Well, should I be cutting my carbs? Should I be cutting my carbs, or should I do intermittent fasting with this?" I go, "No, no, because you've tried that, right? You've tried that and did it work for you? No. Um, the macros that I give my clients." are designed to help them build and maintain the muscle, burn the fat, right? I'm not saying you have to stop eating carbs. You don't have to eat all carnivore or Mediterranean. I, you know, there's no certain window of time that you have to eat all your calories in. You can eat first thing in the morning and be in bed at night and eat a plate of food. As long as you meet your calories, you meet your macro limits and you work out um, according to the level that I set out for them. I do customized workouts. You're going to burn the fat, right? You're going to build lean muscle. You're going to see the results. That's going to make you feel better about yourself. You're going to feel more confident and confident creates accountability. And then you just start treating, you start treating yourself better. You're going to start treating other people better and your life just becomes elevated. You know, you, you, for me, and I see, I see my happening to my clients um, their families are getting healthier because now they're becoming that role model, right? Um, the, the leader, the true leader, not, you know, coming home from the bar or 
you know, always bringing home fast food because that's, that's, that was my habits, you know, and that's, I think that's why people kind of gravitate towards my message and, and what I'm saying, because I, a lot of people, especially in my trade, they struggle with what I struggled with, you know, um, constantly drinking, constantly eating out. Um, we were eating out three or four times a week, right? Where, you know, when I was growing up, you go out to eat and that's a treat, you know, you might do it once a week. And now takeout is so convenient and it's becoming like a staple in the American diet, you know, home cooked meals with healthier ingredients. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to change people's whole lifestyle, you know, understanding that you don't have to get rid of the foods your family enjoys. You don't have to get rid of pizzas or hamburgers. I'm going to help you find alternative ingredients that are still going to let you enjoy those foods. Yeah, they might not have, you know, the pepperoni and the full fat cheeses, but I mean, haven't we overindulged with that for too long? You know, let's sacrifice a little bit of these foods to create a healthy lifestyle for our family, but still be able to give them that, you know, um, yeah. I'm, I eat ice cream every night, every night. I make my own, right? I mean, I make my own ice cream with, with protein. It's got protein in there, not a whole lot of fat. And I mean, a lot of people ask me, dude, like, are you, what are you not eating? I can eat whatever I want as long as I stay within my customized macros. Very cool. Very cool. Um, have you read the book? Uh, have you ever read, read any of the studies of, uh, Dr. Weston A. Price? No, I haven't. Um, he actually talks, um, he did a study in the late, late twenties about why Americans, um, specifically Americans, he was an orthodontist and, uh, he wanted to know why Americans have such bad teeth in the 1920s. Uh, with uh, the, with all the quote unquote back then modern technology of dentistry that they had back then, so he actually found out that it was actually the diet that was, uh, and the diet is uh, directly correlated to your DNA and your ancestors. So if you can switch the switch your diet according more towards what your ancestors would have eaten your DNA would respond positively and he's, te and he tested it and it works great. Um, I'm Greek, 66% of my DNA comes from Greece. The other 33% comes from the Balkans. So I've recently, maybe last year switched my, um, majority of the way that I eat is towards Greece, Southern Greece mm -hmm. and the islands. And it's next level. Plus, uh, there's other stuff, too, that I got rid of, like fluoride. Well, trying to limit the amount of fluoride and stuff, poisons that goes into my body. But um, yeah. it's a, I brought that up because you said that you don't follow a specific diet, like keto, uh, whatever. And yeah. um, that's exactly what he says, because you should be eating according to what your ancestors were eating. So it, it's really yes. good. I, it's really good. Weston A. Price. Dr. Weston A. Price. Uh, He's a, yeah, um, they usually have him tied in with Dr. Dr. Francis M. Pottinger. He did studies on cats. You know, it, it's a <laughs> it's an interesting, interesting study that he did. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. One one thing we started doing was trying to grow our own food, you know. Um once the pandemic hit, right? Um there was a lot of fear about the market's running out of food and, you know, what are we going to do? And there's just lines outside to get into the store and you better get there early. Um, me and my wife started our, we started our own garden and we started here at the house. Um, not too successful with the garden, you know, <laughs> it's hard. It's a lot of work, but um, we bought some fruit trees that, that have been growing great. Uh, we just got through um, half a season of peaches. Um, we have apples growing right now. Um, but that's one thing that we've started really trying to do is grow our own food. You know, um, stuff we buy from the grocery store, like um, heads of lettuce or green onions, you know, just 
once you get some roots in there, put it in the ground and let it regrow. You know, trying to be more self-sustainable is pretty important, I think. Well, I mean, that's that, that's smart. I mean, it's not just because of the pandemic, but also now with the food prices going through the roof. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. It just makes more sense to farm your own food. Yeah. We are coming close to the end of the show. And these are the 10 questions that I ask all my guests to get your perspective on these 10 topics. With the increase in people suffering from depression from the past two, three years of uncertainty that we've lived through, what would be the one thing that you could tell them to keep their hopes up? There's plenty of other people that have gone through it. Seek out their advice. Right? There's there's resources out there that, that you can call upon that will give you the tools. What's the one thing that you do daily that helps you, that amplifies your ability to stay focused? Definitely sticking to my schedule, sticking to my program, um, waking up at the same time. Um, the only day I don't wake up at the same time is on Sunday. I, 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 the Sunday is my day off from work. Um, so I get a little bit more rest on Sunday, but I don't break. I don't break from my program. It's It's been over a year, close to a year and a half, and I haven't missed a workout. I haven't missed um, a journal post. Just staying consistent. If you could pick up the phone right now and call yourself at 20 years old, what would you tell yourself? Let your conscience guide you. Don't defy it. Looking back, would you change anything? Um, you know, I want to say yes. I want to say yes, but I'm going to have to say no. No, because, you know, life happens for us. You know, and we, it's up to us to learn those lessons to get us where we are today. What's more important to a man, his word or his purpose? Huh. I think, uh, I think your word. I think your word, you know, your word should be, your purpose should be in your word. But definitely your word. What scares you? Um, what scares me is um, failing my family. You know, if I'm doing the right thing. Where do you see reps and double time in the next five years? Um, hopefully being able to change more people's lives, you know. Having, having a bre a greater influence on, on trying to inspire more people to become better individuals. Well, how about you personally? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, in the next five years, I I hope to see myself just grow more spiritually, um, have a, a stronger relationship with my wife. You know, I work on that daily. Um, hopefully, um, being able to retire early and focus, you know, on my family life and and my coaching business. Where can people find more about you? Uh, definitely um, Instagram, Reps and Double Time. You can search Reps and Double Time or just my full name, Daniel Spencer. Uh, um, also on Facebook, it's uh, Daniel Spencer and, um, send me a message. You know, I'm an open book. I don't, I don't hide anything. I don't hold anything back. You know? Very cool. And we will put, we'll post all the links that you've given us, uh, in the show notes. So everybody has easy access to you and your content. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, um, take action, you know, take action today. 
don't postpone it till Monday. Don't, don't say I'll do it later. Once that thought comes into your head, this is what I need to change. Then you need to take the positive steps immediately to create those changes in yourself. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on your sh on the show. Uh, this has been a very uh, your story is very inspirational. It really is. It, um, I mean, from you may not have seen it, but it is rock bottom when you come to that point in anybody's life when they when they've said, you know what, what am I doing with this? What am I doing with my life right now? It is a rock bottom. So for you to come out of that stronger and stronger and more stable. It's not stable yeah. in a, in a sense of, you know, financially stable. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like mentally, spiritually, physically stable. It's a huge thing for you, for any man or woman yeah. to be in. And especially right now, 12 years sober. Congrats, brother. That's a huge, huge, huge milestone. Keep going. Thank you. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I'm 20 three years and i haven't touched the cigarette in 23 oh, that's years awesome congratulations so, thank you <laughs> so um i give you props and i'm and i know i know you're i know that coaching business is going to go even higher just because of your story so it's a powerful story with a powerful message so con good, good 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 for you and um you have a fan right here <laughs> Awesome. Appreciate you. Going through hard times is just a test. What you need to know is that when you get out of whatever you're going through, you will be stronger than ever before, and you don't need to go through it alone. Always know that you are not alone. Stay tuned for more real people with amazing stories that are just like yours. Until then, to everyone out there listening, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or good night wherever you may be in this crazy world. Hey guys, John from Resilient Reboot Productions and the Fitness Oracle. I just wanted to thank you for watching this episode and I really do hope that you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell and share this episode if you are watching this on YouTube or on Rumble. If you are listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker FM or whatever streaming service that you may be using, Please give us a five-star rating and a positive review as it will help us reach out to more people that are suffering from mental health issues. Now, if you haven't done so already, um, I am offering access to a free weekly newsletter that we send out every Sunday and it would, and it's jam packed with podcasting tips and health and wellness tips to keep you balanced um, in the podcasting and content creating space. So if you haven't done so already, sign up to this free newsletter. It's uh, it's totally free, and it also gives you access to the uh, the Fitness Oracle private community in Mighty Networks, where we talk about this episode. We talk about how to implement, how you have implemented these uh, lessons that you've picked up in your life, and how it's impacted your life. And we are working on a lot of great other um, um programs and and uh, support systems for you guys to be able to uh, to access. So if you haven't done so already, sign up to the newsletter and uh, I'll see you guys on the inside.